Welcome back folks to lecture KDD2, um, week two, uh, we start with lecture two, where we will take care of how dimensional data. This is a, a very um, large uh, lecture, I would say, so a lot of contents. Um, so we, we're going to speak um, about high dimensional data for a couple of weeks. And um, so here is the overview of uh, the lecture. Uh, you see a lot of stuff. Uh, we'll uh, take care this week um, of the first um, section and the second section, actually. Yeah. So this week will be the first section and the second section, and uh, the remaining uh, sections will be in the remaining uh, weeks. Okay, so let's start with an introduction to feature spaces. So before we uh, talk about high dimensional uh, feature spaces, we talk about feature spaces in general. and. Uh, yeah, we talked about this uh, this kind of feature transformation uh, last week, where we say, okay, one of the um, possible ways to um, generate features, or to yeah, to generate features actually, to generate a, a feature representation is the manual feature transformation, uh, where we have, of course, um, some universe of data objects. So this is our raw data, maybe images or text or some unstructured data. And uh, we want to transform this uh, uh, representation of the data of th those representations into a different representation, which is a feature space. Uh, in uh, the best case, it's um, yeah uh, a table of um, uh, real values. So the columns uh, are real values. So it's it's r to the power of n. The, the the feature space, the vector space, yeah, the real vector space. Uh, and we're looking for um, this feature transformation, which is a mapping from the universe of the original raw data um, to this uh, feature space. And um, for this uh, feature transformation, a very important point is that we need a, a similarity model, which is a similarity function, actually. So uh, this S here um, uh, yeah, computes for two different objects um, a real value um, indicating the similarity uh, of these two objects. So um, the higher this value is for t for a pair of objects, uh, the higher the similarity. So the more similar are the objects. Yeah, um, and um, actually uh, we use this feature transformation um, to compute this similarity because we use a similarity function in the feature space. So the r to the power of n uh, space. Um, so we uh, compute the similarity on the feature representations we got from this uh, from the feature, feature transformation um, of the two objects in order to compute the similarity of the original uh, raw data, so to say. So that is actually the idea. Uh, that's why we are doing this mapping because the similarity function here is usually much easier to define than uh, a similarity function directly on the complex representations of um, of the raw of the raw data so just comments some comments here um, instead of uh, a similarity measure very often a dissimilarity measure is uh, is, is used um, a dissimilarity measure of course is a distance measure yeah and uh, this is um, potentially a small uh, difference but a very important difference because a similar similarity measure obviously is the opposite of a distance measure. So a similarity measure assigns high values to similar objects and uh, the distance function or distance measure uh, vice versa, the, the other way around, assigns low values to similar objects, obviously. Yeah. Um, another comment, the design of the feature transformation and the definition of the, the similarity measure or the distance measures um, are obviously important assumptions about the patterns we want to find uh, later in the data. Why is that? Well, um, if we um, design our features um, not in in a proper way or we, we miss some important characteristics, um, we will not find those characteristics uh, later as patterns. We will um, pick up this particular comment um, later on in the in the uh, in the second section. Yeah? Um, and yeah f the feature transformation and the dis distance um, uh, function can usually be derived manually yeah, by explicitly transforming and defining def and defining um, the, the um, corresponding functions or corresponding um, yeah, functions f and, and sim or dist um, or uh, you can also try to, to do that implicitly by curls 
and of course as we uh, said um, or discussed in uh, uh, last week of course also automatically by representation learning but um, as I said before um, the the old school way is to do it manually and very often you can only do it in the old school way because uh, all the fancy deep learning stuff cannot be applied because um, you don't have enough training samples and stuff like that okay so um, yeah dissimilarity or distance measures um, typically follow the idea of a, a geometric approach so the objects are defined um, by their perceptual representations in some perceptual space which is um, kind of the raw data yeah so th this is the um, physiological space also and the geometric uh, distance between the perceptual representations um, define the similarity of the objects yeah this is um, the basic abstract idea um, and um, to put that within the scope of the um, feature-based similarity the perceptual space actually is the feature space or the feature representation yeah so you try to transform your raw data into the perceptual space which is the feature space and the geometric distance in this perceptual uh, space is then the, uh, the the distance function yeah and um, that's how it's basically done so um, if you have um, a feature space of r, r to the power of n um, your your complex objects uh, are basically points in an n-dimensional uh, vector space and the geometric distance function uh, or distance measure can be for example um, the Euclidean distance which is one of the uh, canonical uh, ways to do that.